Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint, and today we're going to be talking about making organic compost. If there's one thing your plants need and one thing you can do right for your plants, it's actually making a very rich, high in element, high in elements from your periodic table. There's about 118 um, elements. I believe last I checked, 118 elements, and your goal is to get as many of these elements into your garden and actually concentrating most on nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But the micronutrients, which are all these other elements, are just as important for plant health. And I'm going to teach you how to actually get there without spending a fortune at your local garden center. So what I've got here is actually my Starbucks coffee, and we're going to talk about how to actually take advantage of the fact that Starbucks actually gives you the free coffee grounds, which is an excellent start to making some organic compost at home. But before we start, what I want to share with you, and I've got this um, Eureka lemon tree over here, which I made from a cutting. So being that it's a cutting, it's actually growing on its own rootstock, and it'll actually um, grow to a standard size tree being anywhere from 25 to 35 feet. So the advantage of actually grafting trees is you can actually control plant size by grafting onto rootstocks that are either dwarf, semi-dwarf, and semi-standard. Uh, but this here will eventually grow to be a huge tree. But as you can see here, I've already got a couple of fruit on here. And the reason why is this plant is actually, um, you know, a cutting off of a mature wood um, that's probably, I forgot, I didn't look at the um, date when the Eureka lemon tree was created, but it's probably at least 50, maybe 100, maybe 150 years old. But the, the wood is mature, and because of that, every single year it'll bloom, and if the conditions are right, it'll actually support fruit as well. But this is a pretty small plant, um, and this is actually year two for the tree, um, and we're gonna continue growing in the pot. And the other thing I wanna share with you before we get started, is take a look at the tree trunk here. We actually painted it with an Ivory Organics 3-in-1 tree guard paint, color green, so you can actually see what that looks like. Um, the more mature wood, the paint actually holds on to a little bit better than the newer wood, which actually has a lot of wax and it comes right off. But I'm gonna show you how you actually can apply that. And this here is the product. I'm gonna stir this real quick. <coughs> and share with you what we got here. So if you take a look here, it says Ivy Organic. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint, just add water, a natural tree trunk and branch barrier, protection against damaging sunburn and insects and, rod and rodents, on, for use on roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs, and it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product. And you can see here, I've already pre-mixed this before the video, and what we're gonna do is actually take this organic paint, color green in this instance, and we're just going to take a brush and and recode it. We last coated this about six months ago, so we're doing it again now. We're in the middle of July, and the goal is to actually keep this plant protected from sunburn. So you can see how easily this step is. And we can go up as high as we can to any exposed surfaces that are gonna be exposed to the sun. So that's pretty much how that goes. And we're gonna do both sides. I'm gonna take my time and actually um, coat that better after the video. Let me show you one other thing that we did, and I'm actually gonna give you the YouTube link to it as well. If you can follow me, I'm gonna show you an avocado tree here behind me. So if you take a look over here, this is a Haas Avocado. Um, we just installed it last week and we just coated it with the Ivory Organics color white. And then what we did is we took one or two teaspoons of the product and then put in a spray bottle and then sprayed the leaves. And if you zoom in here on the leaves, we've actually got days that are gonna be approaching 100 degrees here in Los Angeles, but this will now be reflecting the sun and keeping the plant cool while the roots get established so it can actually put out as many leaves and as many branches during this growing season rather than being stressed trying to stay alive um, during these brutal hot summer days. Let's get started. So here we are now. The first thing we're gonna discuss is the periodic table. And as you can see, we've got you know element number one, hydrogen, element two, helium, element three, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluoride, neon. No reason to repeat this all, um, but the point is, and I'll actually give you a link to another video I did earlier um, where we actually used um, an actual whole fish to fertilize a plant, but a fish actually contains 60 elements. So we're dealing with um, about 50% of the periodic table can be found in just fish alone. But what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna make homemade compost. And that involves using products, and you're trying to do, you know, these are rough numbers, 50% green matter, 50% brown matter, and, you know, stop this video, you know, at this point, write your notes down. Um, but this here is like my chart to make sure that I've actually got a balance of these things, which will create a hot compost, 
which will kill all the diseases, kill any um, seeds in, in your product, um, and create a good compost that'll be good for your garden. Um, but to actually create your own compost, you're gonna wanna make sure you've got equal parts of green and brown, and brown compost consists of dry leaves, corn stalks, wood chips, coffee grounds, and wood ashes. So these are examples of brown compost. And green compost includes your grass clippings, your manure, garden debris, weeds, and kitchen straps. And I made a note over here, I said, do not bury immature compost underneath new plantings rather than incorporate it as a top dressing to new and established plants. And the reason is aerobic versus anaerobic biology is you don't want to put immature compost you don't want to be putting immature compost underneath your plants, which will actually then be rotting and robbing the soil of the nutrients that your plants otherwise need. So what we're going to do here first, and I'm going to show you the, um, the, the things that we've got here. So let me show you here um, some of the things that I've actually got to actually get started with the compost. This here is my bin that I've got over here. It's just a small trash can. My garden is pretty small. Um, I'm working with less than 700 square feet, and I've planted over 20 fruit trees in this garden. And I'll give you that link as well where I can give you the tour of all the plants that are actually in this garden. But this here is all the compost that I need to actually take care of my garden year after year. Um, and come and take a look. See what's inside of here. So I've got my gloves on. The person that's holding the camera is freaking out a little bit because there's little flies coming out everywhere. But if you take a look here at this citrus over here, you'll notice that it's covered in this white mold. And then, can't even really tell what this is. But, you know, more scraps that we got out of the kitchen. You can see there's insects crawling all over it. I don't know, hopefully you can catch that, but there's flies and, and ants. And if we dig in a little deeper, we'll see if we can see anything else. Yeah, take a look at that. Here's some more, here's some more bugs. Take a look at that. Here's another insect. It's in there. But what they're doing, here's some more pretty gross stuff. So what's happening in here, the insects are, are consuming all the things that are in here. You can see there's branches in here, there's some food scraps, and what we're going to add right now are here's some more scraps that I actually found inside of our house. Here's some strawberries, we're going to dump some bread, we've got some grass clippings, We've got some dry leaves that came off of our neighbor's bamboo that fell into our, our, onto our property. We're gonna be adding, so we're gonna be adding also some rotten bananas that we had here in our house. And then we're gonna add some native soil right out of the garden. The soil actually has more bacteria in it. It's got more fungus in it. And best of all, and hopefully I can find this here, Got the worms. Take a look at that. Huge worm. This guy's gonna be taking advantage, eating all of this organic material that's in here. And there's more worms in there. Here's another little guy. So by adding some native soil from your garden, you're actually gonna be adding the bacteria, the insects, the nematodes, the fungus, and so much more into your compost that's gonna um, result in a healthy and organic um, garden. One last ingredient I'm going to toss in here, and we start off the video with this, is I got these coffee grounds from Starbucks. Here it says Starbucks, coffee grounds for your garden. And you can actually take these grounds and sprinkle them around your plants. But it's not the most effective way to actually get the nutrients out of this. The best way to actually do it is you actually just add it right into your compost bin. This here again is going to feed all of the microorganisms um, that are in this, and we're gonna, um, and then the next thing we do is take all of our ingredients, I'm here with my pitchfork, we're just gonna mix that in. And what we're doing is not just mixing, but our goal is to actually add air pockets, air pockets of oxygen in here. The goal being we want aerobic, or oxygen enriching um, respiration to be going on in here, and not anaerobic. We don't want this food to rot, we want, all of the oxygen living organisms, such as the earthworms, to thrive and to exist and to consume this product. And the last step we're gonna do is just water it. You gotta keep all the living organisms alive. So we're just gonna water this at least once a week and keep stirring this 
at least every three to five days. And that'll be it. Once you're done, keep it covered and hide in the furthest corner of your garden just in case it gives off a smell. We don't want it to be anywhere near any of your guests that are here in your garden. The other thing we're gonna teach you now about, and actually one other thing I wanna share with you before we go to the next step is, take a look at this. So our goal is to get as many elements into our garden and we just threw strawberries in there and strawberries are rich in vitamin C and manganese and iodine and folate plus strawberries are a good source of copper, potassium, biotin, phosphorus, magnesium, vitamin B6 and omega-3 fatty acids. Coffee is the most widely consumed beverage in the world. Coffee has many benefits and even contains some vitamins and minerals such as potassium, <laughs> niacin, magnesium and vitamin E. Bananas are a very good source of vitamin B6 and a good source of manganese and vitamin C and potassium um, and biotin and copper. And grass includes potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, phosphorus, manganese, zinc, beta carotene, B1, B2, B6, vitamin C, folic acid, and panthenetic acid. So the goal is again, we've just added so many different food groups into that container of compost that are ultimately going to be enriched in your garden. So we've just made compost. What I also want to teach you about and what we can do to actually create a liquid fertilizer, which will be a lot easier for watering your container plants, is actually making a liquid fertilizer. And what we're going to do to accomplish that is we're going to take a couple of handfuls of our organic compost. We're going to reach a little bit deeper. And before we do that, what I want to share with you and what I've got here is I've got a container of water. This here is a five gallon um, tub. This here will water at least anywhere from three to 10 plants here in my garden. So I've got this five gallon container and what I've got here is my pump. And this is connected to a power source. This here is the end of it, which actually has a bubbler and then I've connected it to a weight. And in this instance, I used a spoon. And I've got this pump from, you can see over here, Petco, air pump, probably spent about 10 bucks, maximum 20. Taking this, and I'm actually gonna drop it to the lowest point in the water. And what this is doing is it's forcing oxygen to actually um, be in this water. The water, again, has been standing for at least 24 hours to get as much of the chlorine and chemicals out of the water so that all the living organisms we put in here do not get um, killed by the chemicals that are actually existing in our, in our water supplies. So we've got the water, we've got a bubbler now that's oxygenating the water. And now we're going to get some compost. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our compost, we're just going to add this to the water. Some of this is broken down, you want to get as much of the broken down materials as you can, but some of them are a little bit larger, no big deal, we're going to throw that all in there. So the goal is now we got our nematodes in here, we got our fungus in here, we've got our beneficial um, bacteria in here, and now what we want to do is feed them for the next 24 to 48 hours before we actually use it. So you're going to keep this bubbling now for the next two to three days. And what we're gonna do is now take um, an organic sugar, such as this. I picked up this at the um, grocery store. It's an agave in the raw. Um, but you basically wanna get something that's um, a sweetener, again, with no chemicals. And we're just gonna add a couple of tablespoons. And that'll be it. And the goal is the sugars will now feed the microorganisms that are in this water. The oxygen will actually make sure that we only get the beneficial um, organisms that will benefit the soil and, and enrich it with all of the elements that we just shared off the periodic table. So we've just now made the best liquid fertilizer for your plants and by making that compost we've made the best organic soils um, to be adding for your plants as well. One other thing I want to share before I conclude, I just noticed that I had this bag around the corner. You can actually add to your compost, you can buy a bag of manure generally for one or two dollars from your um, local nursery. You can just take a couple of handfuls as well of manure and add that on top of your compost as well. And this has a lot of nitrogen in it, which is important for plant health. Um, but again, remember this is only part of 
part of what's necessary for making a good compost. So you, we've got the nitrogen coming from the manure, we've got the nitrogen coming from the grass clippings, we've got um, the other elements coming from the coffee grounds, we've got the kitchen scraps, which are actually enriching um, with more additional vitamins as well for your plants to actually have a successful, vigorous, healthy, and growing garden. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, and most importantly, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on all the other Ivory Organics gardening educational videos that we put out on average once a week. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.